Hello, this is supposed to be a video that will talk about the general properties of organic compounds and uh, some of these topics are actually just review topics from general chemistry and we should be able to go through them just you know at a very quick pace and then after all we will discuss some properties which are more related to uh, organic chemistry and structural formulas as compared to general chemistry so the first topic that I would like to talk about is or review on about is the property of electronegativity so we should already know by now that electronegativity is the property of an atom to attract electrons towards it so the more electronegative an atom is the more likely it would want to get electrons or snatch electrons from other lesser electronegative atoms for example we have fluorine and uh, we know that fluorine we should now know that fluorine is the most electronegative atom because as uh, we see in the periodic table we recall that from left to right from bottom upwards electronegativity increases All right. so um, this is useful here in organic chemistry when we review the types of bonds well there are two general types of bonds we have a uh, nonpolar and polar we have uh, the so-called ionic bond but we're not going to talk about because ionic bonds are very uh, let's say rare in organic chemistry so we have electronegativity difference values so how do we compute for that we, we will just get the absolute value between the two electronegativity values of the atoms in a bond so we will have an example but just for the values first nonpolar 0, 0.0 to 0 0.4 polar electronegativity difference is from 0 0.5 to 1.9 let's have an example now I have a carbon to carbon bond and as I said to get the electronegativity difference you get the difference absolute value of their values of the atoms between the bond so of course the answer here is zero making the, this bond nonpolar let's have another example here hydrogen has 2.1 so the difference absolute value between the of this is 0 0.4 and it will also still be nonpolar but here for example c to o o is 3.5 absolute value difference would be 1.0 correct so this would now fall under polar especially oh also since we know that O is 3.5, H has 2.1, the difference is 1.4. This is even more polar than the C2O bond. Alright? Now, the next uh, quick topic that I would like to review on is the octet rule. Just to recall why we are, for example, for carbon, we should have four bonds with it. Well, it says that, you know, octet, of course, meaning eight. The valence electrons of an atom should have 8 electrons. For example, in carbon, we have uh, 4 valence electrons. Well, it needs 4 more, right? So, remember in a covalent bond, there are 2 electrons from the 2 uh, participating atoms. So, for example, this is the carbon with 4 valence electrons. Uh, if we have an H for each electron in carbon, for each valence electron in carbon the total valence after that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and uh, that would now um, satisfy the octet rule All right. now how about for nitrogen it has 5 valence electrons so if this is nitrogen it has like this 5 valence electrons it would now need just 3 electrons more so meaning that it would accommodate three more bonds and uh, last example for oxygen it has six valence electrons this one is O so one two three four let's just put the two single electrons here so we, it just needs now of course we now know by pattern it now needs just two more bonds to satisfy the octet rule. This is the explanation as to why carbon should always have 
four bonds with it. So we we say that this is tetravalent nitrogen. Sh well, we we get the drill now, right? It should be trivalent, or it can accommodate three more bonds. And oxygen is divalent. And also we have uh, the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine. They have seven valents, and of course, as a as a pattern. We, we can say that this is monovalent, of course, meaning it can only have one bond more.